If you can turn your attention with me to the book of Matthew, we just want to give you something just to take home, um, what I will call a little doggy bag. I will just give you something to take home, give you some leftovers, uh, just a little something that you can maybe go home and feed, feed the dog. So in the book of Matthew, the 14th chapter, uh, we're going to read five verses of scripture just to give, give clarity on what's happening in the text. And I also, man, I almost forgot. Could y'all believe my, my son is back home from college and it's summertime and we had coverage at our restaurant and the Lord blew in the wind of my wife tonight. Can y'all say amen? Amen. 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 I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful that she, and she seemed happy. I, I know the sermon going to be short tonight. Amen. Because I got to get out of here. If it, boy, when they get 50 years old and they happy, you about to get in that window real quick. Amen. Some of y'all will catch it later on tonight. In the book of Matthew, the 20, uh, 14 chapter, the 27th verse. But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of what? Good cheer. It is who? I be not afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me to come unto thee on the water. Now, I want you to underline and highlight on the water. We're going to get back to that. And, and he said, come. Underline come, because that's very important. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on water to go to who? To Jesus. But when he saw the boisterous or the, the rough, the winds boisterous, he was afraid and began to sink. He cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and called him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore did I doubt? If I can give you a, a little small tag or something that you can carry with you in a few minutes, it would be, don't be distracted. Why don't you look at the person on the left and the right of you and say, don't be distracted. Come on, shout it out. Don't be distracted. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord. Don't be distracted. It's what we allow sometimes to... Um, feed our spirit or come into our life that can ultimately distract us from God. These things that I'll be talking with you for a few minutes, just a few minutes, uh, they, they, can, they can vary. It can be uh, your job, things, your car, your movies. Uh, 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 they have now what they call... Uh, uh, the, these football uh, games and these football betting uh, arenas and it can be an Xbox, it can be a PlayStation, it can be a magazine, it can be your own children, it can be family. 
There are many things in this world that we are fighting that are fighting for your time. Every, everything now that I mentioned is fighting for your time. It want more of you. And when we allow them to uh, take too much of our time, well, we know we lose focus on what God is really saying in our life. So what is the answer? Do uh, we have to realize what are the distractions in our life? What, what do we need to really check in our lives? Well, we see in Matthew 6, 19, that Jesus began to talk about some distractions that will happen in your life. Matthew 6, 19, it says, do not store up yourself treasures on this earth where the moth and the rust destroy and where the thief break in and steal, but store up for yourself treasures in heaven. Where the moth and the rust do not destroy and the thief cannot come in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So he's telling us that money can be a distraction. I quote, I quote all the time that uh, without any money, you get no honey. And, and that's a true statement because my wife is here tonight and I don't have to look on the camera. But, but my wife, she, 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 she wouldn't have married a broke man. Okay. All right. All right. So raise your hand, ladies, if you want a broke man. So it's obvious that money is important, but don't let money be a what? Distraction. Because if money is the distraction, then where your treasure is, that's where your heart would be. So if your treasure is in money, then I can look at your checkbook and tell where your heart is. If your checkbook tell me that you're online and you're buying stuff every week and you know your closet is full of shoes and you still keep buying shoes, maybe your shoes is a distraction. Maybe you're going to blame uh, Macy's and blame Dillard's and you're going to blame everybody. But really, it's the true fact that you can't, and in verse number 24, you can't serve two masters. Either you're going to hate one and love the other or be devoted to one and despise the other. You can't serve God and money at the same time. So money can be a distraction. We notice in Mark 4 that he said those that fall amongst thorns, they are like the ones that fall into deceitfulness or riches and then they become unfruitful. That means you can start off in the church doing well and then when your mind get caught up on money, then you become unfruitful. There was a story in the Bible where Jesus said there was a man that had a, uh, a feast, but then he said, go out to my friends and invite them to come. But one said, I just got married. The other one said, I just bought cattle. The other one said, I just I had, I got some land. I got to go tend to it. What it was really saying, they all had money. Because if you just got married, it costs money to be married. If you just bought cattle, it costs money. So every time he went to his friends, they made an excuse because money was a distraction. Now, is money the problem? No. Money is not the problem. It's the love of it. Oh, I'm going to kill a demon in a minute. It's the love of money. It's the, it's the fact that you'll work three jobs and won't come to church. But pastor, I got to pay my bills. The reason why you got bills is because you love other stuff. If you put down some of them shoes, you don't need three jobs. Okay, I'm going to leave y'all alone. Matthew 20, uh, 6 and 25 say, Therefore, I tell you, don't worry. Now, another distraction is worry. Another distraction is worry. Don't worry about your life. And what you should eat or what you should drink or uh, about your body and what you should wear. See, what, what he's trying to explain is that when we get so distracted, what is more important than food? Is life more important than food? And the body more important than clothes? So what Jesus is really saying is don't focus all your attention on this earthly stuff. Because earthly stuff will get you in trouble. 
You may not believe this, but my wife, and I love using my wife as an example, we, we wanted, we built that home, and then after we built the home, and then we, 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 she was happy. But after a year in the house, she wanted something else. Now she want the big screen TV. Okay, we put the big screen TV. Then, then after a while, See, what I'm trying to show you is the world, the possession of this world, it'll grow old on you. That's why if you're in the market of buying a car, don't get confused with the test drive. Why do you think, and I was a salesman for nine years, why do you think we put you in the car? And guess what I'm going to say to you? I just saw you pull up in a 2001 Ford Taurus. <laughs> how you doing? My name is Vincent. Welcome. To, I was at Advantage Ford at the time. Welcome to Advantage Ford. Uh, how could I help you? Oh, we just looking, looking for a good deal. Looking for a two-door, four-door. What color car are you looking for? Oh, we're looking for... Uh, and I go through the greeting. And I, and I was real good at it. Could you imagine? But if I can ever get you in the car, I can distract you from what you're driving. Because I go to your car and I look in there, I see, I see you got a, a, a piece of pen trying to hold the air conditioner together. <laughs> and I say all that. So the first thing I do when I, when I get you in the car, I'm going to turn the air conditioner on. I'm going to go, boy, that's some nice cold air, isn't it? Oh, I'm killing a demon tonight. In other words, I have to distract you from what you have and what I devalue your car. That's what we call the walk around. We, we walk around your car. Well, what, and then, and, and, and the, the saying, I'm, I'm going to help somebody that's maybe buying a car. The saying is, don't say nothing. They will tell you what's wrong. So if you got a messed up, dented up car, all I have to do is go over there and go, then you're going to say, oh, yeah, my son, he hit that car with the football. And I'm telling, oh, OK. Oh, you know, my husband. Uh, my job is to distract you from the fact that you have a car that's running. And one thing I know about that car is paid for. Oh, I wish I could kill a demon. You got a car that's paid for. And now I'm going to put you in some payments. But in order for me to persuade you to get out of a car that you're not making payments in, I got to distract you. The next distraction is media. Media is one of the biggest distractions that the Christian and the world now is using. Social media. Everybody is in Facebook instead of putting your face in the book. Boy, I, should, I need to write that down. I, hey, hey. Tell your neighbor, put your face in the book. See, Romans says it like this. Romans 8 and 30, 38. He said, I am persuaded that nothing, neither death, neither life, angel, principalities, powers, Anything present, anything to come, no height, no depth, anything, no, uh, no other creature shall what? Be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in what? Christ Jesus. In other words, Paul was saying, don't be distracted. There are going to be a lot of people that's going to come. Angels, uh, people going to be prophesying, people going to be prophet line. Some of this stuff don't went from prophetic to pathetic. <laughs> oh, y'all ain't want to hear what I'm saying tonight. I'm talking about when you need to know Jesus for yourself that you don't get distracted. Amen. I looked up the last, the top three distractions in a car. 60% of death and fatalities happen because, listen to this. People lose their thought. 
They just ride down the road and forgot they're driving. Could you, could you imagine, listen what I'm saying, that 62% of the fatalities that's on the road and being distracted is the fact that somebody start driving and go. Oh. Am I helping somebody? Because that's the way the devil wants you to be a Christian. He wants you to be serving God and all of a sudden you go. Cell phones, number two, is 12% of the leading cause of death, of distractions. I was thinking about this commercial, Mayhem. Anybody ever watch that, Mayhem? And, and what happens is that you're so busy trying to do something else while you're doing something, oh my God, you're doing something else while God is telling you to do something else and you're trying to do something else and trying to talk on the phone and text and, and all this kind of stuff and then you, hey, then you kill somebody. But the number three, listen to this, the number three reason, 7% of why people die in fatalities and distraction is that they look at outside people, outside objects. It's even more distract. The, the outside objects are even more distracting than the people that's in the car. Okay. And now, in other words, they call it bottlenecking. If somebody have an accident, and, and guess what? More accidents have happened while other folk looking at another accident. All right. I want to get it in your spirit. While you're driving, instead of you paying attention where you're going, you're worried about where somebody else is going. And so if I can just bring you into this text, we see how Peter is on the boat and they're out there in the, in the, in the, in the, pretty much in the, in the wee wee hours of the day. When I say that, that's about four o'clock in the morning. And it's very kind of, kind of dark, but it's foggy. They can't really see. And here it is. They're on the ship and they think they see a ghost. But they hear the voice and it was the voice of Jesus. Everybody's afraid. But Jesus said, be a good courage. It's I. Have you ever been in a situation where things you can't see your way out of it and God give you a word to say, build good courage, but, but in the midst of it, even though I can't see my way out of it, I know God is with me. Yeah. And Peter, let me, let me talk to some Peters in here. See, I'm going to tell you what Peter is. Peter is a guy that will cut your ear off. Peter is a guy that don't mind fighting. You, you, you know, you know, you got friends like that. You got brothers like that. They, they just, they just snap. They, they, they are fighting a minute. Peter is not afraid of anything. And Peter said, "If it's you, Lord, bid me to come." Now I'm gonna show you. Peter began to walk on water. Some of you have been walking on water for a long time. Some You don't even know how you've been above. You don't even know how you're making it. You don't even know how your bill's getting paid. Oh, glory to God. But God told me to tell you, you've been walking on water for a long time. But something happened to Peter. It's because Jesus said a word. Jesus said a word. He said, come. Who did he say come? It was 12 disciples on the boat. So he gave an opportunity for everybody. He didn't say, Peter, come. Y'all missed it. He didn't say, Peter, come. Even though Peter said, bid me to come. But God is not selfish and he don't have no respect to person. He just said, come. But it was only one crazy person. Do I have any crazy folks in the house that can believe God for anything? It was one crazy guy. And the reason why you're here tonight, because you crazy. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, 
I know you crazy because you're here tonight. Because if you believe that there was a man called Moses that walked and put a rod and the water just departed, if you believe a guy called Jesus went in a tomb and got up, you got to be crazy to believe that. Your mind got to be your mind got to be made up to believe there's a God that created everything, knows everything, and here it is. He made you, he knows everything that you're gonna do, your thoughts, every you don't before you even speak a word, your God already knows what you're gonna say. You got to be crazy to believe that. That's why when you have crazy, crazy faith, that means that. Even though when it looked impossible, you begin to just walk in the impossible. Folk tell you, don't do it. It's crazy. But when you have a God that you trust and you know, if Lord, if you just, be, if you say a word that speaks to me and I walk. And some of you don't step out the boat. Now we got a problem. The Bible says, and the wind was boisterous. The wind was rough. Hmm. Could I could I bring you in into a secret? Was the wind boisterous when he walked on water, or was the wind boisterous before he walked on water? Oh, the wind was already there. It's just that when he had his mind on Jesus, he couldn't see it. Okay, all right. When Adam and Eve was in the garden, they was naked, but naked. <laughs> I don't know if that a cuss word or not. <laughs> I'm glad we had the altar call already. They did not know that they were naked until sin got in there. See, what happened to Peter, when you are so desperate to come to Jesus, you don't see what's going on around you. It's when he got out there and folks start saying, Peter! <laughs> You know you walking on water? <laughs> hey, see, see, the problem is, is when we get out in the water and then we start saying, Lord. <laughs> Am I talking to somebody that's been walking by faith and you look at your checkbook saying, my God, I don't know how I made it. <laughs> he was walking on water until he took his eyes off Jesus. See, as long as he had his focus on the right thing, he was doing the right thing. But when he took his eyes off the one that called him, oh. y'all missed that. See, the pastor can't call you. I can't hire you and I can't fire you because God called you. If God called you, can nobody fire you. Folk looking for some validation or saying, well, pastor, what you see in me, what God told you. You cannot go around to every church and every prophecy and everybody prophesying, trying to get somebody to give you a word. Instead, of you say, Lord, bid me to come. Bid me to come. I, I ain't worried about the other 11 on the ship. He walked away from them. But his problem was, when he got out there, he started looking around. And sometimes when you're a man or a woman of God, and you can be doing good, and you get hooked up with the wrong people, around the wrong voices, and you start looking at the wind, man, man, why are you doing that? And before you know it, it done brought you down. Now watch, watch Peter. Can I kill a demon? 
Peter did not sink. Oh, y'all. I said, Peter did not sink. He didn't just go through. He didn't just fall in the, in the deep part. Guess what happened? And when he got to a place where he felt he was in trouble, then he called what? Jesus. Don't wait till you don't lost everything to say Jesus. Don't wait till everything get almost to wit's end. When you walking on water, just keep walking. And I'm going to say this and I'm going to close. Some of the closest people, some of the closest people in my life, they were really developing me. And I say this quite often. I believe marriage is for a man to be developed. God gave a woman to a man to help him build character. And I'm going to tell you why I say that. Because the Bible says if a man can't run his own house, how can he run the house of God? In other words, until I master my wife, I can't master nobody else. Because she can be a distraction. Oh, you're getting quiet. Let me help some brother here, some brother. And just look at me, You just wink. If she, she's next to you, just wink at me. I know... Just wank at me. Just, just do something. Let me know you're there. There are times where I can say, honey, this is the way the Lord is taking me. And she'd be like, well, God ain't really see. Now, I'm going to show you. God ain't really showed that to me. You just follow me. And it took years for her to like when God tell me something I just got to follow him I used to get angry with my wife you know why I used to get angry with her because when it came down to our children she wouldn't agree with me oh I'm gonna kill a demon tonight I used to say honey I'm trying to teach these kids something why are you not on my side? Well, because I'm on their side. But God told you to follow me. And I use that. Can I be transparent with three people? Maybe three people here. I will get so angry with my wife and I was a preacher telling other people how to live and I'm riding, getting in my car, riding down 95 because I don't know how to deal with my situation. And then I come around church folk and say, hey, praise the Lord. When last night, I almost stopped at a bar because my mind was so distracted. And the devil will use the very people close to you to distract you from your purpose that God has put before you. And you have to be so careful that you're so saved, that you're so anointed, that it won't happen to you. The devil is a lie. I'm telling you, Revive, you got to be so king and knowing that when something happened like that and you feel your flesh, because some of you in here got anger problems. Just wink at me now. And when we have, I say we, when we have anger problems, we can put on a good show in front of everybody and go home and act like a devil and then we can build distraction to our children we can build distraction to our spouses because you when you went to revive you was all holy and then you gonna come to this house and cuss me out and you wonder why the spouse don't even want to stand up when you stand up because she's sitting there going my God 
I can't even get in the spirit watching you praise, watching you act like a hypocrite. Y'all ain't gonna like me tonight. Don't be a distraction. And don't let things distract you. Because God called you. God chose you. And if he say, come off the boat, don't worry about nobody else. And don't spend your whole lifetime telling me about the people on the boat. That's what was wrong with Martha. She was telling Jesus, Jesus, won't you tell, uh, uh, tell Mary to come help me? If God called you to usher, you just usher. If God called you to sing, just sing. And don't worry about nobody else. Don't get distracted. Don't be dismayed. Be a good cheer. He reached his hand out. Somebody clap their hand. What you trying to tell me to stop, stop preaching? <laughs> he reached out his hand. And Jesus looked at him and said, Oh, ye of little faith. See, it was that moment when you was walking on water. God knew you was there. God knew what you was going through. He wanted to see how you were going to react to the wind. How you were going to react to the waves. But would you just give God praise even when you can't see your way? Even when you don't know how to pray? Sometimes it's Listen to me, I'm telling you as a pastor, sometimes you don't know what to pray for. That's why you need the Holy Ghost to intercede for you. You, 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 you get discouraged. We all do. Would you stand all over this room? Come on, give him praise, revive. Come on, give him praise, revive. Don't be distracted. There's a real demon, there's a real spirit that's fighting against your spirit. And it can be through media, it can be through money, it can be your job, it can be anything. Tonight I de destroy and I break the curse of distraction. Would you hold your hands up as we, we get out of here tonight? Would you hold your hands up? Father God, tonight, the enemy is trying to come in like a flood but you said you'll lift up a standard against it we would not be distracted by the cares of this life I'm not going to let nothing separate me from the love of God call me God I, I beg you I bid you Lord call me I will step out in faith and I will walk on water. I won't look to the left and I won't look to the right. But God, I keep my eyes onto the hills which cometh my help, for my help comes from you. So tonight, God, every family member that the enemy is using arguments and division to build distraction to the children I bind that spirit of confusion tonight I bind that man that strong man that his wife can't tell him nothing that nobody can tell the devil is a lie God I pray that you humble his spirit that he'll be willing to listen and God when you call him he'll walk 
just some water, but he'll walk before his family. He'll walk before his wife. He'll walk before his children that they will see Jesus in him. I pray for that wife that don't understand her husband, that don't really know what's going on. There's some, some things men sometimes hide and we harbor in our hearts. So Father, I pray now that you give her discernment and, 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 a, and a love and a compassion and wisdom and knowledge that she'll know how to talk to her husband and she'll be submissive to her husband. That God, that she don't be a distraction to her husband. Help her, God, that she don't be a distraction to her children. But she'll be a mother. She'll be a wife. She'll be a leader. She'll be a woman of God. I pray for every child, every boy, every girl that's in the home that's trying to be a distraction. The enemy is taking their mind. I, I pray over that lazy boy. I pray over that, that spirit of slowfulness that sits around the house and don't want to, the devil is a lie. Hey, I pray now, God, that you raise that teenager up and give him vigor, give him the strength to know that, God, you called him to be a man. I pray for that young lady that will keep herself pure until God send her husband. I ask you, Lord, tonight, help us not to be distracted from the cares of this life. Would everyone hold their hands high as you can? And so, Father, as we leave this place tonight, there will be no more distraction. We, 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 we have committed our eyes I pray for the eyes of the men and women of God in this room that their eyes will be focused on you and not what's on the side not what's on the left not what's on the right not even those things that are behind but they're pressing towards the mark of the high calling which is in Christ Jesus we all give you the praise and we give you the glory in the master's name of Jesus we pray alright brother go ahead and clap your hands now come on give God praise all over this room Come on, give God praise all over. God bless you. Hug somebody and say, don't be distracted. Hey, thank you so much for joining us today. I pray that this word has been beneficial to you and that you'll find some application for your life that would just draw you closer to God. And if you'd like to join us at Revive Church, you can join us at 9 or 11 a.m. on Sunday mornings at 851 Johnson Street. And if you'd like more information about Revive Church, check out our website at reviveusnow.com. God bless you and have a great day.